Welcome to Tutorials Point. In the previous video, we have covered the implementation of directives in AngularJS. We also saw the commonly used directives which we can use in AngularJS. So now, let's do some practical implementation of directives in AngularJS. Again, I'll be using Visual Studio for writing the programs. So as you can see in the screen, I have already taken an HTML page where I have included the scripts of AngularJS already as we did in the previous and in this div I already applied this ng app directive. So now we can start with the AngularJS implementation. So in the first example what I do is I will take an input type is equal to text means which is a text box. And as we discussed that for binding the value with HTML controls, we can use ng model directive. So here, let me give a name, like uh, I put a name to this model. And whatever you will enter in this text box, I want that to be there in the span. Okay, so here in the span, I will use ng bind directive for binding the value like for HTML tag we use ng bind for binding the values and for controls we use ng model for binding the values. So let's put a placeholder also out here. Enter your name and here I will give a message welcome with the username. So let's see how this program will look like. Okay, so as it is saying enter your name, as soon as I'll start writing the text, you can see there is a change in the span as well. So you can see we implemented some smooth implementation in AngularJS without putting any postbacks or something and it is clearly going to uh, reflect in the page, right? So let's find one more example in which we will use some other directives. So as I have already written this program for saving some time, so here you can find again there is an ng app directive, so inside this div I am good to implement the AngularJS code. Now, in the first tr, that is in the first row of the table, there are two columns. In first, I put a checkbox and in second, there is a button. I desire that on the basis of checking or unchecking the checkbox, I want to make my button enabled or disabled. So, as soon as I will check the checkbox it will be a true so the model which is enable disable button will be true and the same value will be assigned to this disabled means when you will check the checkbox the disabled will be true means the button will be disabled and as soon as you will uncheck the checkbox the button will be enabled again similarly in the second row I again put a checkbox and a button where I used ng show directive. So as soon as you will check the checkbox, the show hide value of this ng model will be true and the show will be true. Means when you will check the checkbox, the button show means visibility will be true. When you will uncheck the checkbox, the button will be invisible again. Similarly, if you will use ng hide at directive out here, it will just give a opposite output. In the third row, I took the ng click which we usually use for generating any event. So on the button click event, what I did, there is a click counter variable which I kept on incre increasing the value by 1. So every time you will click a button, the value will be incremented by 1 
and the same value I will print here in this TD. So let's see how the output of this program will look like. So here in the first checkbox, as soon as I will check this checkbox, you can see the button is disabled means you can't click it further and when you will check it again, the button will be enabled. Similarly, there is a show button, when you will check it, you can see the button working and when you will uncheck that, the button is invisible again. And in the third one, there is a click counter. So by the time you will start clicking, every time the value will get incremented by 1 and will be shown here. So this is how you can start writing some programs like this. In our next video, we will see about the implementation of MVC in the programs.